Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Go Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte. And guys, we got to take a look today at the Seattle Kraken. I know some of you guys have been uh, commenting on the game recaps because you're frustrated with how things have gone so far for the Kraken this season. So we're going to dive into the Kraken. And if this is, you know, the team for real, is it going to get better? Is it going to get worse? We're going to go over that today. So the Seattle Kraken... Have not had the best start to their campaign. Definitely a little bit different than the Vegas Golden Knights' early success as an expansion team. Um, their opening night, uh, really their first two games of the season, were not going to be easy. They were both road games in Vegas and Nashville. Obviously, Vegas, they threw a whole parade for them. I thought that was nice of the Golden Knights to throw a, par a parade for the opening night of the Kraken. Uh, that was one of the most viewed games on the West Coast in NHL history, which... I thought was great for the league. Obviously, the ESPN deal seems to be paying off early for the NHL and definitely for the new Seattle Kraken. So early on in this game, the Kraken didn't look great. They were definitely a little bit shell-shocked in this game. But once they kind of got out of that first period, got the jitters out, they seemed to play a lot better. And you kind of saw their game change in the second and third period. Their defense was much more alive and active in terms of moving the puck forward, kind of creating opportunities, putting pressure on the forwards on the other team who were playing defense. And they definitely made it more of a game. It was, you know, they were down 3-1 in the game. They tied it up at three. And they end up losing the game 4-3. to three. Now, the problem is, it's how they followed it up the next game. Where they won the game in Nashville, Grubauer gets both starts, they start the season 1-1, one one, but we're seeing Nashville, who is now 1-3 to start their season, they really aren't that great. So it's a victory, it's obviously a moral victory as well, but okay, you found a way to get the win, right? That's all that matters. Then you go to Columbus, Philadelphia, and New Jersey. Now, I think there's something that you have to remember here as well, is the schedule, you look at those three teams and you say Columbus is supposed to be at the bottom of the standings, right? Payne for Shane, Shane Wright, right, in the draft. The Flyers got a lot better, but how good are they really? And then the Devils, they're still kind of getting out of that rebuild. So how good would they be? Well, we're seeing that all three of these teams actually look very solid to start the season. They lose that first game 2-1. to one. In Columbus, Patrick Line gets the overtime winner, kind of, you know, put a dent in the uh, momentum from that previous game in Nashville. So now they go to 1-1-1 one, one, and one on the season. Then they go to Philadelphia. Dave Haxall makes his return to Philadelphia with the Flyers. That was the team he used to be with. And they get absolutely shelled. They lose this one 6-1. to one. A lot of puck watching. Not a great start for Philip Grubauer in this one. He didn't play great in the other three games, but game four, he was not up to snuff at all. One, two, and one to start the season. They play New Jersey on Tuesday night, and they lose that one four to two. And again, they just, you look, you could tell, they look dejected. They looked beat up. And it's only five games into the season. They are one. 3-1 and one to start their season. And that was with Joey Decord starting. Now that's something I also want to talk about. I don't know why Chris Drieger isn't starting yet. I'm not really sure what that whole thing is about. Um, but that's definitely something to keep an eye on. Because I think it's interesting that he hasn't gotten a start yet. It's been all Grubauer, even when he wasn't playing well. I think he's got like an 867 save percentage. That's not good enough. You, you gotta have... Even a 900 save percentage probably isn't good enough. An 867 is below NHL standard. And considering the money they gave him this summer, they're expecting a lot more from Grubauer. With that said, they have Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday off. They have three nights off. So they play that game in New Jersey, and they play their home opener on Saturday night at 10 p.m. Eastern against who? Their new division, and region, geographical rival, a border rivalry with the Vancouver Canucks. This is probably the biggest game of the Seattle Kraken season so far uh, because this could be the game where we look back 
in say maybe February and say this is what turned the season around for the Kraken. You know, they didn't have a great start. They played honestly a couple of pretty good teams other than Nashville and they won that game and they were able to pick up a point in one of those other four games. So then they played Vancouver at home. The fans were going nuts and they were excited. They beat a pretty good Vancouver team that that is definitely beatable on any given night. Then you host the Montreal Canadiens, who are pretty much shredded apart five games into their season. They're 0-5. So let's say they get two wins there. Now you're 3-3-1. Three, three now you play Minnesota. The Rangers, you win one of those two games. Now you're 3-4 and four in a home game stretch before you head to Edmonton. And you play the Oilers. And now you give yourself a chance. You play Buffalo and Arizona. Those are winnable games. I know Buffalo's look good, but still, you look at the roster for Buffalo and Arizona. They're going to be in the you know the pain for Shane sweepstakes as well. So, and then they play Vegas again, and they get potential redemption against the Golden Knights in Vegas. So, very quickly, we could see the crack and turn this thing around. With that said, though, they're going to need much better goaltending. Philip Grubauer has to he has to do better than he's done. And I don't even think a 900 save percentage is good enough for the Kraken. They're going to need him to put up at least a 915, 920 save percentage because I just don't know if they're going to be able to score enough goals with this current roster. That's a That was one of the big things we talked about for the Kraken this offseason. That's why they were maybe looking at a Vladimir Tarasenko, maybe talk of a Jack Eichel because they didn't have that guy that could consistently score goals. And not everybody has, you know, you're not going to just get an Alexander Ovechkin, but a guy that can put up points. Now, the good thing is they do have a guy that can put up points. In the first five games as a Seattle Kraken, we're seeing some guys actually kind of rise up and do well. Jared McCann, a point per game. He's got five points in five games for the Kraken. He's got three goals. Uh, Jonas Donskoy leads the team with three assists. On the season, you look at the top minute guys, you got Yanni Gord, who has been injured. He's played the most, 22 minutes in that first game. Uh, Mark Giordano, the captain, he's got 21 minutes of ice time. You're seeing Jordan Eberle, you're seeing Jamie Alexiak, Hayden Fleury, Carson Soucy, Jared McCann. Uh, You're seeing some of these guys just kind of finding their way in the lineup. And I think that's huge for the Seattle Kraken. With that said, they do have some injuries as well, which is making it even harder. October 13th, they put Colin Blackwell and Marcus Johansson on the injured reserve. Blackwell with a lower body injury. He will be sidelined indefinitely, according to Coach Hackstall. Um, And that's from the Seattle Times report. So he may be out for a little while. And then Marcus Johansson is on the injured reserve as well, which I think is at least a week. He will be out. Kyle Yarkroak is day-to-day as well. So that's three centers right there for the Seattle Kraken. A team that isn't the most deep down the middle to begin with. And now they have three centers that are just poof, gone. Just like that. And Yanni Gord, who is coming off of his injury issues as well to start the year. He had off-season surgery. So that's been kind of a thing as well for him. So... There's definitely potential for the Kraken. And I again, I, I want to be optimistic because it hasn't been a great start. Obviously, it hasn't been the way people had hoped. But you have to remember, there is a lot of things that can still go the Kraken's way this season. I know it's been frustrating for the fans, but there is still a lot to be excited about for your hockey team. I'm very excited to see what they do this year. It's just going to be a matter of time. I think this Vancouver game is the game, though, Saturday night, because I think that's what they're going to need if they want to have that success. So, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. What do you think of the Seattle Kraken in their start to the season? And can they turn this season around with maybe a couple key matchups here over the next week or two? Let me know your thoughts down below. Guys, make sure to check out our Streamlab shop in the description down below. You could also check out our Patreon to help support the channel. It definitely is much appreciated. And you know what? Maybe you don't have the funds right now to do that. I know it's you know times are a little tough right now. That's fine. You know what is free and you don't have to pay a dollar for is to give this video a thumbs up and hitting that subscribe button. That's all free. So if that's the least you could do, I would definitely appreciate that just as much. Guys, 
As always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.